there are lots of ways for students to show what they know when we're doing traditional face-to-face -face class or if we're doing remote instruction. And so if we want to take our demonstrations of learning, if we want to find new ways to help students show what they know, if we want to kick that up to the next level, what does that look like? And what kind of tools can we use to make that happen? Well, today we're going to be focusing in specifically on this one tool, one that I personally call my favorite note taking app ever. And that is OneNote. And so we have got just a whole host of people here that are going to be talking to you about OneNote, about how you can use this to do demonstrations of learning. My name is Matt Miller. I'm the author of Ditch That Textbook and the owner of this channel. Um, we're going to be doing lots of live videos on this channel. So if you aren't subscribed to it, go ahead and click that subscribe button and hit the little bell next to it so that you get notifications for all of these videos. And so we've got kind of like a Brady Bunch style <laughs> video going on here. Like everybody look to your left, look to your right, look down. Can you see everybody? Yep. There. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go get a screenshot of that later. That was fun. <laughs> so um, if you're watching this live, welcome. We're so glad to have you joining with us. And we'd love for you to check in in the chat, which it looks like several of you have. If you're watching this on video replay, we're so glad that you found it. And you're going to get the benefit of the ideas of everybody in this call and everybody who's watching it that shows things in the chat. We're going to be sharing out lots of ideas. You're going to just get a treasure trove of stuff by the time that you're done. So let's start moving around the screen real quick and do a couple introductions. Holly Clark, why don't you start? So I'm Holly and I am Matt's co-conspirator on these live things that we're doing. And I'm super excited to have a star studded guest here today. So I'll pass it to the next person, Jenny. All right. Very good. Jenny, you're next. All right. Well, uh, my name is Jenny Long, and I have my other half with us uh, today, Salee Clark, and together we are, normally we high five. Yeah, okay. like, <laughs> and I want to get in. Yeah, so we have to do this distance yeah. high five, and it's kind of cramping right. our style. Social distancing and all. That's yeah. right. All right, Salee, real quick for you. Hi, I'm Salee Clark, and I work with Jenny. We're instructional technologists in Eagle Mountain Saginaw, which is just north of Fort Worth. Excellent. Very good. And Mike Dolphson. Hey, I'm Mike Dolphson. I work on the Microsoft education team on product manager on the team. And I work a lot with OneNote in education and class notebooks, as well as the inclusive classroom. And I also like to wear purple and uh, <laughs> I sport a few purple capes in this lifetime. That's right. And you may notice that since we are talking about OneNote, there are several purple capes in this group. I'm going to try to turn mine around so that you can see that they have the OneNote logo on them. See, that's, that's lots of fun. So. All right. So in this video, um, we're going to be talking an awful lot about OneNote, about things that you can do to help students demonstrate what they've learned beyond just answering questions, just like doing worksheets. And this was one of the essential questions that Holly and I was ta were tackling in a separate video that very much fits here. And that is, how can we ditch worksheets? And then specifically in this video, we'll talk about with OneNote. Because if we're talking about worksheets, we're talking about kind of those repetitious sort of superficial recall basic facts type of things. And if we want kids to think deeper and to, for it to be more engaging, what does that look like? So before we dive too deeply into this, I want to say hello to everybody that's here. There's Susan who says she taught at Fort Worth ISD, which puts her Yay. right there. With There's Katie Short, who has been in a bunch of our videos recently. Katie from Ottawa, good to see you. There's Catherine Day, my friend oh, from here, here. Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Yep, we've got... Jennifer, who's here from California. Oh, there's a bunch of people in here. We've got, it looks like awesome. Jane, I'm going to say, but I probably mispronounced it, from Baltimore, Ontario Public School Trustee. Good to see you. Tracy's here from West New York. We've got Penny here from Saskatchewan. Ming, Canada is representing today. This is, this is awesome. Loving it. Um, Monica is here from Chattanooga, Tennessee. Um very good. Katie is loving the purple capes, by the way. Yay. There's Tim Riley, who's here and has no experience with ah. OneNote, but that is why we're doing these, right? Yeah, hey, Tim. So, yep. And then we've got one more person checking in. There's Renee from Rhode Island. So if you're checking oh, in live, we're so glad to have you with us. And I'm going to turn this over to Holly so we can she can start to kick this off. 
So we're just going to let our experts get started. No need to talk to me. And we're going to have them show you one note for the people who are uh, haven't used it before. And then look at some of the amazing ways that we can use it in the classroom. So let's hand it over. Awesome. Well, um, OneNote is one of our favorite, favorite tools. We um, wear our capes with pride. We um, have been teased quite often from some coworkers of ours that like to give us a hard time, but we we love our capes and we're very proud of the purple. And I have been using OneNote for gosh, over 10, 11 years. And it's just been amazing to see the progression and all the change that has come with this program. But uh, we wanna share some things with you and how um, we have been using it with our students in some really exciting ways that really, like Matt said, can just be a great alternative for that traditional worksheet and really brings in that collaboration. So I think Salee is going to share your screen. Do you see it? Here it comes. <laughs> Here it comes. There it, oh, there it is. is. All right. Um, well, here's a little bit more of our information on here, too. We have our Twitter and yeah, yeah we have a, a YouTube show and a blog and you can find us on Instagram and we Yay. are also Ed to the Max consultants as well. So definitely connect with us. We would love to um, connect with you on social media. Uh, the first thing we want to talk about is breakouts. So you've probably heard of an escape room. I actually went to my first real escape room Um about a month or so ago before all of this uh, pandemic hit. And so it was so fun to just, you know, get those clues and break out of the room and, you know, go into the next section of the adventure. So that's actually what you can do with OneNote. So um, we're not going to go into detail, but just really ways that you can bring different engaging activities um, for your students and they answer clues, they read content, um, whatever it is that you're giving them video or text or however you're presenting your information, then they answer clues or do puzzles or just different activities and they get clues. And then those are the passwords that they enter to unlock the locked sections of the, the OneNote. And then they open up that section and then there's more content and more clues and more puzzles for them to solve. So it's kind of a race against the clock. They can work in pairs, they can work in groups, and then whoever breaks out of the OneNote first is the winner, and they have you know a celebration and all kinds of things. So it's just a great activity that you can do with your students, and we have been doing those for a couple of years, and our teachers and the feedback that we get is just amazing. Like they just love it, and the kids are engaged, and that 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 content sticks because obviously it's something fun and it's something they're going to remember, and um, they they're going to remember that information better than just writing it on paper. Yes, ma'am. I have a question. I wish we were in Microsoft Teams because I could raise my hand <laughs> on this. Um, so uh, can how are people using this remotely? That's a good question. So, yeah. Yeah. so to use it remotely, uh, it's the same way. They would build it within OneNote and just make sure that whatever the activities are that you put into your OneNote are something that they can do at their home. Because a lot of times what we'll do is we'll make things tangible and digital. Um, and so the activities you place in, you want to make sure you design them with the students in mind where they can either do it all digitally and they don't need um, outside uh, pieces or make sure that it's things at home that they can definitely access and use um, within. So to share it, if you're using Teams, you can simply add the OneNote into your team um, on the top tab in any of your channels, or you can share the link at the top um, out with your students. Uh, so that way they can access it and go through the breakout. And this is Mike. What I would add, uh, I've, I've known Jenny and Celia a long time, and they've been great OneNote Avengers for many years. And what we found is these breakouts inside of OneNote have really gone, and now in the old world, I would say viral, but I feel like that you can't even say that. <laughs> <laughs> they got really popular, uh, yeah. but they were teacher generated. So a few years ago, we had an educator who started the breakout room inside of OneNote really is a way for brand new people, students, teachers, PLCs, instead of your traditional PD course that might be a little more boring, they built the, the training right into the OneNote breakout. So then you're having fun. And remotely, like they were saying, you could do this where you have different groups and whether it's in teams, you can make private channels, you could just give them their own notebooks separately but you could have kids have remote video calls. They could do that on their own within their house, like a scavenger hunt. And what we found is it's a really fun way for people to learn a new thing instead of just like, 
do this, then click that, then do this. <laughs> it's more game-based learning, which is better retention at the end of the day. And the other thing I wanted to share is because Jenny and Salih have been such incredible one note breakout educators, Microsoft might be working with them on a new templated fun breakout room on the Met course. So we're hoping in the near future, we're gonna have them put one of their most favorite breakout rooms for a couple of different subjects and grades. So it's not one size fits all, but then you can really play with it yourself, try it out, modify it. So look forward for that probably later in April. You know, that's Hashtag, really, you heard it here first. Yeah, yeah. that's really good that, that you brought that up because we did just get a question in the chat about, will you share the breakout template with us? So are we waiting for that or is there something that we can give the people now? Well, we, we do have, there are some blogs and examples and Jenny and Salih, I'll let you talk to, if you have something now you can share. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have a blog about it on the generallyshow.com. And we also have a wakelet full of uh, breakouts too. And Matt, I can give you those links. Okay, I'll try to sort of dig them up while you all continue to, to talk about all this. So, yeah, um, um, you can find us on Wakelet at Generally One, and uh, the definitely our blog has some of those. So yeah, we have some templates. We have some exciting things coming. So um, one of the breakouts that Mike was referring to on the Mech will actually be a breakout learning how to create the breakout. So it's really a great PD um, platform that you can we'll go have through and experience. We'll have some planning sheets included as well with the one on the mech. So it will have a lot of great resources in it that you will definitely want to check out for planning and creating these. So I'm going to jump in. Mech is Microsoft Educator Community for those of you who, you know, might not know. <laughs> and it is the best community out there. You definitely want to be a part. And it's often referred to as a family. So um, and people will say that there's nothing like it out there anywhere. And there is friend, like friends, family, it's just a support group, just a huge support group. And people are there. They have your back. I mean, if you need to have a question about anything and, and the platform online is fabulous, too, because you can find virtual field trips. You can connect with other educators. You can do mystery Skypes. I mean, there the, it's endless. You can go through courses and learn about any product that you um, want to know more about. And then you can earn badges and points, too. And that's really fun. We all love that piece of it where we can, you know, Selena and get a little, I, you have I how many badges? badges? You have how many points? <laughs> yeah, one note badges too. I yeah. Think yes. They got cool one note courses. Great stuff. I would say during this time of remote learning, this community has been instrumental for us. We are constantly reaching out to each other and just saying, hey, how are you doing this in one note? Or how are you doing this in teams? And I mean, our conversations have just been nonstop back and forth between our family. And so I would definitely say join, be a part of it because it, it has really changed the way we teach and communicate and grow as educators. And I went there and got my MIE. Yay. <laughs> awesome. I think pretty soon the self-nomination process for being an MIEE -E is coming up. So then you can. Um, MIE, Jenny, tell us. Oh. It's a Microsoft Innovative Educator Expert. So um, just another level of. Um, some other things that you can take advantage of being an expert and um, traveling using the travel program and other parts of uh, just sharing Microsoft tools and just another um, level of community. So it's pretty awesome. We have monthly calls with all the experts. And so each month we all come together and each area and region will share the different things that they're doing. And so it immediately every month you get PD instantly by joining those calls and hearing how other people are using uh, Microsoft tools in their schools as well. So Lee is actually our regional fellow this year. I am. I am. But gosh, I'm Ooh. hoping I can get in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, let's put in a good word for you, Holly. Thanks. <laughs> All right. So All right. we want to share portfolios. So one of the things we love about OneNote is that you can create student oh, portfolios in OneNote. Do you like, can you hear me? Yes. It's okay. a great idea. Okay. <laughs> we love it. So it um, really has helped our students set their goals and see their growth over time. And so like here you can see that in this example, this is one of our pages and um, the student tracked their progress, tracked their own progress with the drawing tool and um, a template using for October, November, December, and January. And they can see their growth as they um, are learning and tracking and they're doing it with the teacher in their classroom. And we just think this is so powerful for students to be able to look back and really see the growth that they've made. Not only that, 
students can also take pic pictures of their work and insert it into the OneNote as well, if it's been uh, paperwork or even digital work and insert it. And that gives them the ability to really look at their work and evaluate it and choose what is the best work that they have done to share. And um, then their parents have access to it as well with parent links. And that allows them to view the student's progress at any time and really see how those kids are um, progressing throughout the year. Um, so we have loved creating these portfolios. For our younger kiddos, we even created QR codes that they scan and it goes straight to their page and allows them to um, immediately access it on the iPad. So. Uh, it's really been um, instrumental for our elementary students and our teachers. Our teachers also, one of their goals is to show progress of their students uh, individually. And so they immediately use the same portfolio to show the progress of each of their students. And so it's easy and fast um, way for them to uh, show what their students are learning. And one question that I can see people coming up with, Slee, is how does that does that travel with the student? You know, is that going to stay year from year? Because if I'm in kindergarten, and then in first grade, um, you know, we want all of that progress to to stay with that student. And it does, right? It's all <laughs> it's all within your OneNote. You can easily um, save these and send them on with the next student or with your students to the next teacher. Um, or even here's a great tip as well. My son is in eighth grade. And I wanted him to have a portfolio to be able to use the immersive reader and um, the accessibility tools built into OneNote because he is dyslexic. So we created his own portfolio in OneNote, even though his teachers weren't using it, he was able to use it. And he put his work in his, himself and then used all of the accessibility tools to be able to help him. And then next year, now we have that one saved and it's going straight on to next year as well uh, because it is digital. And so it really makes it nice for us to be able to look back and see what all he's done. And along those lines, I think the next thing we want to talk about is accessibility and all of the amazing accessibility <laughs> features. So I know Mike's going to uh, jump in on this one, too. So I don't know, Mike, if this is the latest um, table or not. Because I know it's being updated we all the time. We've, had a date. We've added more since then. Uh, I'm sorry. Whoa. To oh, my goodness. We tried. We were like, frantically searching. We were like, where's the latest? Keep up. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> um, one of the things we love about OneNote is all of the accessibility tools that are built right into it, and especially Immersive Reader. Um, I would say it probably has transformed. Uh, I mean, it has changed my son's life and my life at home. I know it's done the same for Jenny. She also has uh, a daughter who is dyslexic. And so these tools are just transformational. Um, I even, I mean, we love them so much. We tell everyone about them. I know people think we're crazy. <laughs> In Florida, at the airport, I'm like, poop, everywhere. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Did you put a page? There's a page, there's a sub page right underneath that one. So we want to oh, show yeah. you a quick, a quick demo. So hopefully you've heard of Immersive Reader and Immersive Reader is showing up in so many other platforms. So you're going to see that little book with the icon and it's in, you know, some of our favorites, Wakelet and Flipgrid and Nearpod and ThingLink and Merge and just, I mean, it's, it's endless and more and more. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm Lots working on Yay. <laughs> Not letting that down. Immersive Reader will basically take your text and it will put it into a different reading view. And when you click the play button, it will. I don't know if hear my sound, but maybe. The collaboration space is open Ooh. to everyone in a class, and all yeah. class members can read or write on anything in this notebook. Awesome. You can also customize it, which is our favorite, some of our favorite features. You can make it male or female. And Mike, did we hear you write at BET? that real humans are reading all of this? Uh, not real humans, but uh, <laughs> it is neuro text to speech. And so we upgraded all the voices to have the most human sounding. <laughs> really <are>. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's in canvas. In canvas, yes. Awesome. So you can, you can change it to male or female. You can speed it up and slow it down. And then on the right-hand side, you have some options as well. So you can increase your text size. 
You can make it a little smaller. You can increase your spacing and decrease your spacing. And all of this is customizable per student. So the teacher doesn't need to necessarily do it, but every student can customize it to really fit them. You also have three options for fonts um, that are great for reading. Then you have your themes, so you can change the background color and really have that high contrast or um, a color that is also easy on the eyes to be able to read. So kind of like a color overlay. And there's tons of colors, by the way. Um, and then a question. Yes. Um, since you have someone from uh, this here, since we do, um, that open dyslexic font, have you guys thought about adding that or is that in the works or anything? Do you know about the open dyslexic font? I do. And, and I might say something that for some people uh, they don't like, but we have uh, some PhD reading researchers that we work with at Microsoft and, and some of the top in the world. And there's been a bit of research around uh, open dyslexic and the dyslexia font. And it, it actually, under a lot of scientific research and papers over time, they don't, they don't actually improve. It might be something that a student likes, but it's not been proven to be effective in, in a, just a pure science perspective. So we chose not to add it just because of that. Um, in, the, in the dyslexia community, there's sort of back and forth on whether people like that font or not. And so we've kind of stayed away from it at this point. Do we know anything about um, fonts around serif and sans serif, Mike? In terms yeah, of readability? The, the, yeah, uh, Sitka, the one that we have in there was actually, there is some a little bit of research, a published research around Sitka. Um, and Comic Sans is really for design for younger readers. It's not necessarily designed for dyslexia, but if you look at the way that the letter A and the letter G and some of those other letters are drawn, it's mm -hmm. in a similar way that many younger students are taught to write their letters. And that's why we added that one in too. But okay. in general, in, in the dyslexia community, like the challenges with fonts are some people think, oh, just use a different font. And that, that just solves dyslexia magically, which is absolutely <laughs> not the case. It's not a font disorder, right? And so uh, I think we want to make sure we don't think that a font is like the answer to something is all. Mm -hmm. Agreed. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, my son likes Comic Sans, so I mean, but I think it's just preference. Like he also, Jenny's daughter and my son both like the blue background as well. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, well, there's tons of research around the visual processing yeah. around the colored background. We don't have to actually. I'll put a link for Matt if he wants to post into the main window. Uh, we actually put together. I'm gonna. It's an immersive reader um, research. So actually, we we cite and show all the research that's existed for decades in some cases that went into the immersive reader. So almost everything in here is informed in some way or another by research. That's awesome. Very good. We, uh, we always say, or yesterday too, we were like, we feel like we're doing infomercials because it just keeps getting better and better. Mm -hmm. and like, wait, well, show us some of the other stuff, Salih. Yeah, I know, yeah. it's getting better. So you thought all of this was great, but it, there's more. So if you click on grammar options, you can also turn on syllables. And you can even uh, highlight different parts of speech. Um, and so we have a teacher on our team who used to say that she would ask her students to write a rainbow sentence uh, because then they could oh. go back and check to see if they had all the different parts of speech in their sentence. I think she's even watching. She just made a is comment she? about portfolios. Uh, ah, yeah. no, Emily, she is amazing and has done so much wonderful stuff with OneNote and special education within our district. So kudos to Emily Killen. She's amazing. Yay. Uh, but again, like we said earlier, it just gets better. <laughs> so there's also reading preferences here. And this is one of my favorite features. There's a line focus. So we'll even zoom in. And as it reads, it's going to zoom in on that one Members line. Can read students. or write on anything in this notebook. And this is huge because it really helps take away a lot of those distractions and really focus in on what the student is uh, reading. Just then, a on that, we got feedback. I love this because we didn't design it necessarily for students with cerebral palsy or people with concussions. The, both of those have been fairly commonly using that line focus feature. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of the inclusive design right there. Wow. That's awesome. I mean, my daughter, she's always used a tracker when she would read and have to have that um, growing up in school. So I just think for those students to really help their eyes and settle their eyes on that one line at a time, it's, it's huge. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and then we also have a picture dictionary, which is one of my favorite pieces, especially for our students with dyslexia, because they are missing a lot of that academic vocabulary. And so this really does help them fill in those gaps and really understand what they're reading. Um, so you can click on a picture and it will show you our word and it will show you a picture um, of what that word may mean. Um, one of our favorites is space, but I don't think space is on this one. Let's see. Oh, it is. Yay. <laughs> so it kind of even shows you the two different meanings of that word and what it might mean um, in the sentence. So it's really a neat feature. And we're also going to be adding That's probably 15,000 more images in the coming months. And so we're going to be adding a awesome. lot more. Awesome. And this is the best part. It gets even better. Yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like I'm, 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 we always, uh, when we present, we always struggle over who's going to show immersive reader because we both love it. So much. <laughs> And everybody else loves it too. So it's like the highlight. Jenny, you want to talk about Translate? Sure. So um, right now, and I don't know, I, I counted the other day, Mike, but I might be wrong. It's like over 80. So how many is the official number? I always say it like 65 and over because they keep adding them and I can't keep track. So yeah, I counted like the other day and there was 80. Five plus. Yeah. Over 80. 80. <laughs> Because I was like, wait a minute, that's more than 60 something. But um, <laughs> so you can click on a word and you can actually have it be translated into any language that is listed here. So maybe over 65, over 80 languages, um, you can pick which language you would like. So we've picked a language and you can translate just the word and have it read okay. out loud. Or you can translate the entire document. And I just think it's amazing that when you click document, it does it instantly. Like I don't have to wait for this whole thing to translate. Oh, it does it instantly. And you can toggle back and forth up at the top of the screen. You can go back to Chinese. Go back to Say that again, Jenny, sorry. Oh, I was just saying you can go back and forth between the original or the translated version. And um, it's pretty spot on too. We've tested this um, with some different languages and had, you know, in attendance people with that, that spoke that language. And they, they were like, Oh, pretty, it's pretty right on. It's pretty spot on. So <laughs> it's pretty impressive. Parents of non-native speakers as well. So we found that we got a lot of feedback that parents can now engage with students at home more because they can translate those pages in OneNote, just like you saw. And so they can help engage with the student in some of the homework potentially. It's amazing. And that immersive reader, all of those features are available in anywhere you see that immersive reader icon. And another one of our favorite tools to use is Office Lens. So Office Lens has all of this built in as well. And just recently, uh, the full immersive reader came to Office Lens. So that's super exciting. So you can snap a picture of anything and um, it will read and use all of those uh, tools will be available through the app Office Lens also. And We're Edge. That's really powerful. I'll start at Distance learning, student can be at home, take a picture of a book with the iPhone or iPad. It's coming to Android in, in a month, but then access everything in that book just by taking a picture, even translate the whole book in the mm -hmm. page. We think it's also uh, good for distance learning because just the other day, my son, I was trying to help him. He did it on edge. He was inking on edge for his math and he closed out of it, lost it. And so I was like, oh, it's okay. I said, here, just print it because I've got a webinar to go to. So he wrote it all out. We took our Office Lens app, snapped a picture, sent it to his OneDrive, and was able. we were able to turn it in immediately. So it really made it easy for us to make something that um, was tangible into something digital. That's awesome. OK, anything else, Mike, you want to add about accessibility before we move on? Um, for accessibility, I would just add that maybe just show briefly that speech to text is built right in on the home tab. You can dictate speech to text anywhere in OneNote, uh, right there. So in like 20 different languages, dictation is built right in. Sorry, I haven't used it on this computer before. So <laughs> now it's uh, but now <laughs> Yes, awesome. And yes, that was one of our, and, and my fourth grader has actually been using the dictation because she loves to write and well, aside from her key, her space bar being broken on her computer at the moment, um, oh, she, <laughs> yeah. well, we're going to have right to get this time. New, new computers in this house because they're, um, the devices they're working on are junk. And my son is also ADHD, <laughs> so he will 
work out on the elliptical <laughs> and text to speech his work with the dictate button. So it's great. I'm like, yes, you're working out and doing your homework at the same time. <laughs> But I think that's fabulous because, you know, and one of those skills that we don't have anymore is typing. You know, our, our, our kids don't know how to type. They only know how to, you know, click with their thumbs or use their, you know, fingers and, you know, type away with their uh, individual fingers and just um, peck away at the keyboard. So being able to speak what they want and express themselves and then go back and do the editing and revising. I think that's still a great skill to teach them because I, I barely, I mean, I sleep all the time. I tell her, you know, I can't type as fast as you. So I will speak my emails. I'll speak my texts. I speak mm -hmm. everything with dictation and then I'll go back and, and fix it. <laughs> Great inflection. <laughs> uh, and I love that it's just really choosing how you want to work. I think that is so important in how I'm successful and how Jenny's successful. And, uh, you know, we get to be able to choose how we want to work. Do we want to work on a computer? Do I want to watch on a, work on a touchscreen device? Do I want to type or do I want to speak what I'm um, saying? So I think that's um, really beneficial for anyone using these tools. Mm -hmm. yep. All right. Um, I think the next thing we want to show is how we have um, one of the really, really great things. And this is actually how we started using um, OneNote in our district was with staff notebooks. So um, Celine and I both started together four years ago and the district I was at previously had used staff notebooks. And so that was kind of one of my main uh, goals. And I really was hopeful that our district would really run with that and embrace that idea because it really saves time. And anything that a principal would communicate through email, you can put in a staff notebook. So basically it's like a class notebook. So there are um, different sections, but there is a, a, you know, like a welcome section area. There is a content library where it's read only. So that would be a place where you could put um, safety information, you know, just testing information, you know, just specific information that you want all teachers to know, uh, school related, that you don't want them to be able to edit. And then in the collaboration space is a place where like the librarian could have a page and she could add her library information or different reading and math specialists could add the information there. We have a section for our tech training days and then we put in our agenda and the teachers can collaborate and add to our agenda. So it's just a working document, a working space for all of us. And then there's also individual notebooks for um, individual teachers. So we have some of our campuses are just really running with this and using it for personal uh, documentation for like T-tests and different evaluation processes. So they're documenting their own evaluation information there. They're doing student documentation. They're maybe tracking student attendance, whatever they want to keep uh, parent communication and uh, dump their emails in there. And then the administration has access to those individual teacher notebooks. Other teachers don't. So this is just a screenshot here of how one of our campuses has added a COVID um, section to the notebook. So all of the information that we're sending out, all of the resources, wakelets, links, she has been putting all of that there. And we have access to the notebooks as well. So I've been helping uh, make sure that that notebook is, has, is up to date with all of the, the information there. But it's just an amazing way to, for a uh, a, a school, a team department, you know, to be able to communicate and collaborate all in one place. Yeah. I, re I really like this. Um, you know, the, when I, when I first heard about this, I started wrapping my brain around it in this way. I thought of it like, you know how there are those great big thick binders that they used to pass out to us as teachers, <laughs> yes. you know, and it had uh, all of the things in it, right? Yes. It's kind of like everybody's got that same binder only now you can go in and you can change something on the papers inside of that binder and reflect, reflects exactly. in everybody else's binders. Yeah. And then you've got your own personal notebook in it too. So imagine you've got your binder, but you've also taken like a regular notebook and you've slipped it in there. And so now you got everybody else's stuff and you've got your own stuff kind of all in one place. And yeah, being able to have that all out to everybody where everybody can access it anywhere and being able to update it in real time so you don't have to make 50 copies of something and pass it out and say, replace page 67 well, in the binder exactly. with this. <laughs> like, we don't need to do that anymore. Yes. But that's, yes. I've, I've found that that's been so, so helpful for like, whenever you're planning shared units, you know, everybody's got their stuff all in one place. If you've got, you know, shared assessments or activities or something, you can definitely put things in there, brainstorming in an, a team. Um, and then, you know, of course, when you jump into the class notebook, that whole dynamic is great with students too. So this is, I, I've been quiet for a little while, but I couldn't keep quiet on this one because this is <laughs> such a, such a cool feature, I think. 
We love it. And uh, I like okay, that. So. I like what you were saying, Matt, about how we are actually using it. Cause we always laugh yeah. and say, we just put it on the shelf and I never touch that notebook again until someone say, said, Oh, put this in the notebook. But yeah. or you watch them make a million or you watch them make a million copies and they're like, Oh wait, we got to replace page. Like you said, page 65 yeah. and Selena, I've seen that. And we're like, Oh my gosh, if it was just in a one note, then you wouldn't have to do any of that copying. Yeah. What happens with those papers? You just stick them in the front of the binder and you're like, I'm not replacing page 67. Give me a break. No. Yeah. And then you never go back and look at that content. And so I love that now we're actually looking at that content and using it in a purposeful way uh, versus just putting it on a shelf. And you know, maybe looking at it once or twice a year. Right, right, exactly. I'm taking notes on this in my OneNote. <laughs> yeah. A couple of things um, on the notebook, which also that's built into Teams. So if you make a staff team, it comes automatically with this whole staff notebook template structure ready to go. So you don't have to invent the whole structure. But the other thing is, just like these folks were saying, I was the person who helped launch this originally, and. We interviewed a ton and ton of teachers and staff and administrators, and they all just said, can you make my life easier with all this like paper pushing, bureaucratic, time wasting? It's like one of them said, I didn't get a doctorate in education to be like dealing with binders and forwarding mails all day long. Like that, that's not what I got my PA my ed doc for. Yeah, so that's right. Really like take all that junk and make my life easier. And it's all mobile and I'm not printing stuff or replacing papers and binders. And the other one is some people might say, well, how's this different? Like I use a Google doc or I use a word doc or, or you know, how's this different? That structure makes it such that instead of having a one drive or a Google drive full of like 800 folders that are nested with documents and you're opening and closing documents all day long, mm -hmm. it's all in one place. You can just go bum, bum, bum. That's like a binder, mm -hmm. but the digital I can access all those 30 documents in a couple of clicks documents meaning pages and just the speed and time saved on organization on all that stuff just makes your life a lot easier yeah all i can think about is the executive functioning of some of my students that this would have helped and i've, I've had conversations about this how i feel morally like i wronged my kids by not giving them this tool mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, we've got a couple of comments in the chat real quick. So, um, and if somebody can just kind of speak to these real quick, which team would I create for the staff notebook? That's something that's done sort of at the admin level that's pushed out to all the teachers, right? Uh, well, if, if you want to create a staff notebook, uh, a staff team. So if you create there's oh, right. a class team, a staff team and a PLC team, create a staff team. And at the top, there'll be a little staff notebook link automatically. And the staff leader goes and clicks that link and basically says, set up my notebook. And it'll go through and like create that whole staff template that's empty. And then people on that staff team can start using it. And then class notebook is similar. If I create a class team, it'll create assignments and a class notebook and a few other things. I click on the class notebook tab and say, set this up. And it'll go and sort of <laughs> set up all your students inside of it, ready to go. Yeah. Here's another one. Um, any guidance on the sharing settings? How do the sharing settings work? With class notebooks, you don't really have to worry about sharing. The, the settings are all set up for you, which is nice. Like when you create a staff notebook, there's a collaborative area that everyone can do stuff in. There's a content library that's automatically set as read only for all the team members, but the leaders have access. And then the sharing is set up for each of those individual binders like Matt talked about. And same with the class notebook. So that's the beauty is you don't have to go micromanage all the permissions on every single thing. The, the class and staff notebook does it for you. Excellent. Very good. Another great benefit. You might want to post the one up for teachers that has a bunch of like lightweight interactive guides. If people want to go practice playing with it and seeing how it exactly works, there's, um, yeah, there's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Mike, earlier this year, um, didn't it come out too with Teams that you can, if you already have a staff notebook or um, a class notebook, you can now add that to your team as well. So it will bring over the collaboration and the content library of that yeah. notebook. And you, you can bring over the, the teacher only area too. We didn't mention <laughs> that, but oh. there's also a private little space for staff leaders or a private space for teachers called the teacher only area or the staff leader only area. And so there's a way to import some of that content that you might have had before into your new team that has the same thing. 
But yeah, these interactive guides are great for people who want to actually click through and poke around and understand how does a staff notebook exactly work in a team? How does the class notebook get set up? Those interactive guides on OneNoteForTeachers.com are really good. Is there a OneNoteForTeachers.com like um, equivalent to Teams with all the resources in one place? There is Teams. The, the best place to go for all of our Teams trainings is the Microsoft Education Center that we had before. Okay. There's actually some really mm -hmm. great courses. The one up for teachers were created a while back and we've kept them up to date. But so those are sort of maybe more unique in that they exist. We didn't create all the same for teams. All right. Yeah, very and, good. And, and there's uh, so much like we haven't even gone into the class notebook piece of like distributing and, and you know, and working with student pages and everything. Like there's so much that you can do in a class notebook um, in yeah. addition to just other pieces of the notebook itself. Yeah, definitely. So as we kind of wrap this up, if we've got one more little thing, like of all of the things that you could still talk about, what's the one thing that you're, and I know there's a lot, what's probably the one thing that you'd love to, to leave people with? Honestly, you're looking at the screen. What was the one oh, other thing? We, we have loved it. Go ahead. Embedding. We love being able to embed yeah. other um, yeah. wakelets. So right here, we've got um, one of our wakelets yeah. embedded here. We love embedding other resources straight into the OneNote pages. So yeah. right there is an, a wakelet embedded right into that page. So we love the embedding feature. Mm -hmm. You can also embed Genialies, which we love as well because they're beautiful and interactive and uh, a great way to share content with your students. That's one of the things we've seen in distance learning is that a lot of times content is just given in a written format. Um, and so this makes it a lot more engaging and uh, interesting to look at and be able to easily see your content as well. Um, and you can also embed Flipgrid. So we love Flipgrid and we think this is a great way to um, make it interactive and all in one spot for your students to be able to easily come here and uh, record a video. It's also, I'll add GeoGebra, Desmos, YouTube, Quizlets can be embedded, Forms, Sway. There's actually, we have a whole site that has all the partners that you can just paste a link into OneNote and it interactively just goes bang. So Matt, if you know, at some point there's the OneNote embed site and people can explore all the different partners that you can interactively embed right on the page with the URL page. Dang. All right. Wonderful. Okay. So we'll throw that up there awesome. real quick so that you can see that that's in the chat. Also, my goodness, have we covered a lot of material there? This is, this is fantastic. We got another one, a couple of comments real quick. Yay. There's a glitter pin. Monica says, I think we just put Monica on one note because of the glitter pin. So, um, and then here's a topic yeah. for a whole other video, I think. Yeah. Yes. Kathleen asks, would this facilitate hyperdocs? I think, Holly, I think we may need to have a whole show specifically dedicated to how you could do hyperdocs with OneNote, don't you think? I'm making some right now. I'm making a OneNote binder full of hyperdocs that are super yeah. popular that have been done in Google Docs. It's just taking me a while because we're doing these all the time. But it's going to be a folder of all the favorites. Now take it and put it into Word and mm -hmm. then also inside of um, OneNote. It's just, I need 48 hours in a day. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Yeah. You and me both. Exactly. So we, um, if you're not sure what hyperdocs are, I just dropped a link into the chat. Hyperdocs.co is the place that you want to go to find more information on that. And yes, they do work very, very nicely together. So. And whew. we will have a show. Someday. Yes. Yes, we will. That's right. All right. Everybody take a big breath because we've just went through a lot of stuff out here. So um, thank you again so much to all of you that are here that participated in it, to Holly, to Jenny, to Salee, to Mike uh, for taking the time. Thanks to all of you that have watched um, live and have thrown in your comments and your questions and everything. And again, if you're watching this on the, the replay, um, you know, hopefully you've enjoyed this. Uh, again, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel to get more of these live videos, more stuff is coming your way. So for Holly Clark and Jenny Long and Salee Clark and for Mike Dolphson, I'm Matt Miller from Ditch That Textbook. We had a great time spending a little bit of time with all of you and thanks so much for joining us.